Australia's cricket team is in England preparing for the World Test Championship Wednesday week and then the Ashes immediately after. It is a legacy-defining period for this team and so many of the players in it. Pat Cummins, as he was leaving our shores, set us up for what's to come. Tough few months, but um, pretty excited to head over there. We know how big an Ashes tour is. Even if you have a long career, you might only get a couple of them. So, yeah, it's been in the calendar for a while. We're, we're excited. Pat Cummins on departure. We're going to live all this through the wisdom and experience of Robert Craddock, who's done a fair few of these himself. Hello to you, Crash. G'day, Jared. Yes, it's, uh, it's going to be a special couple of months, isn't it? Starting off with the World Test Championship against India, but uh, there's no other flavour like this one. It's, uh, it's just going to be quite magnificent, and you could tell just just the Australian players, they know this is their legacy moment. They, they have wonderful generation that they've been, Jared. They haven't put the gold studded exclamation mark at, at, the, at the end of their test careers. They don't own enough sort of big time silverware away from home. And I think this is their chance. They should have left with more fanfare crash and they certainly should have arrived to more. Back in your day, they did. They would arrive. This is the worst <laughs> Australian team ever to work through this airport. <laughs> this is how many yeah. beers were drunk on the flight. We've sort of made the odyssey across just a low key event. Oh, remember the days when Rod Marsh, you know, set the record on the flight <laughs> to England and David Byrne uh, in 1989. What was it? 53 cans of beer. <laughs> and then they kept it a secret. No one said a word. Booney wobbled off the, uh, the plane until Merv Hughes did a, a, a famous, infamous, actually, radio interview back to Australia saying, David Byrne's cracked the first 50 of the tour. <laughs> and... <laughs> And uh, though Bob Simpson threatened to send Merv home, you know, I think he was, I don't know that it had gone that far, but it was just Booney's record and Marsh's record were, gee, they were iconic moments. And, and it could go the other way too. I remember in 1993, the Australians were very conscious of dressing up for their opening press conference, putting their ties in place and getting their hair right. And the English... Uh, turned out just in track suits and everything. And, and that was the start of a good tour. They said, gosh, these Aussies look slick. So it can work the other way. All right. So it's a 15-man squad that's been narrowed down for the World Test Championship final. The reserves are Mitch Marsh and Matt Renshaw. That makes Inglis and Murphy two spares. And it means Boland and Hazelwood are in contention for the one open place. Yeah, look, interesting. And no Michael Nisa who's been tearing it up in English county cricket for Glamorgan with bat and ball. You know, a, a Cavalier century maker, he took seven wickets and four wickets recently and just really comfortable in those conditions. But more than that, Jared, his engine's running. Now, for, for this test match against India, which decides the world championship, uh, you, you're choosing a, an Australian, you're plucking an Australian team basically out of the winter, you know, with Pat Cummins, Mitchell Stark. I know Hazelwood's gone to India, but he hasn't bowled much. And then, of course, Scott Boland, whose last game was the Sheffield Shield final. Now, you know, I, I, I'm surprised Michael Neese is not there, at least in place of Josh Inglis or Todd Murphy in a 15-man squad because categorically, they ain't playing. He would have been a chance. I mean, what if they get to the nets and they think, geez, we've got a bit of rust here. I, 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 I'm surprised by that. I, I really am. It fits with the way that they've approached the World Test Championship. This is the culmination mm. of the, the two years of cricket that have delivered them there. I feel like they've honoured that the whole way. And Nice has only played the one Test match in that period of time, whilst Hazelwood and Boland have shouldered the load. Um, Andrew McDonald was in the studio last week, just reading between the lines, is Boland's going to play first up rather than Hazelwood? I, his words were, everything would have to go right for Hazelwood to be ready. And I suspect the other plays in the first Ashes test. And then Nisa comes into contention after that. Or if Hazelwood's not right, I could see Nisa replacing Boland from one test to the next. Yeah, I, I agree with you about Boland. I think he'll be, he is the obvious choice with the squad they've got. But I, I, I still, and I do get the narrative, Jared, and I was going to mention that to you, about rewarding the guys that have come the journey. And that's part of the, that was always the rationale to give David Warner this test. Um, when, when he was 50-50 about whether he'd get there, everyone said he's gone the two-year journey, he deserves to play in the final, 100%, I get it. 
But I still reckon you've got to be very careful not to undermine the greater cause of winning the darn match, if you know what I mean. Yeah. You, you know, as in, uh, like, uh, Josh Inglis hasn't contributed anything to that test match cause over the last two years. Uh, Todd Murphy's played just the one series. You've, if you've got a player whose engine is running, he's in hot form, and no one else has played for a couple of months, I, I just... I think you can overread it a little bit yep. as far as saying we want to be loyal, we want to be loyal. I get it, but hey, which do you prefer? Which do you prioritise? Being loyal or winning the match? You know, and, and Michael Neeser is, is uh, running hot, so I'm I, for him to miss out on the fifteen. I'm surprised. How does England? Uh, how does India's side look? Shubman Gill has been absolutely tearing the back part of the IPL up. I see he's there. We would expect him now to be in this this final. Yeah, we would indeed. I'm still out on him as a test player. I know, look, he's been tearing it up in white ball cricket, a glamour boy, and his best is very good. But I reckon they can get him in England conditions because I reckon he can be a bit loose outside off stump. Fascinating to see. They'll definitely... I'm really interested in their bowling attack because if I was them, I'd play four quicks and drop Ravi Ashwin and play Jadeja as your entire as your spinner batting at number six, then they're right in Australia's uh, uh, faces. If you're playing Mohammed Siraj, Mohammed Shami, gorgeous swing bowlers, backed up by Shadur Thacker and maybe one other quick, you, you've got a, you know. So, and that's my way with Australia. We've got a team to match India, no doubt at all, but they're tricky in, in those conditions over there. And Australia is coming off a pretty cold start. So if one bowler misses fires, I think they'll regret not having Nisa around the place. Because it's we say it every week, Jared, but it is true. Australia, for 100 years, has underestimated the old-fashioned swing bowler yes. who just gets a beautiful, tidy feed every time he goes to England. You know, you can... You, you look back at history, there's been... If, if you're a good swing bowler, there's a guy, Jeff Dimmick, played for Queensland, played about 24 tests, 78 wickets at about 25 or 26. You know, he was almost invisible, but that's a very neat test record. Just bowling left arm swing, in, out, you know, and, and Nisa is about the same pace as Terry Alderman, who took 83 wickets, was it, in his two Ashes tours? Incredible. If I said it, so there are six tests, how many do you think Nisa will play? Great question. Uh, okay, I'll say two. Yeah, two. I'm at two. If it was your yeah. choice, if it was your choice, you're the sole selector, how many tests would you have him play? Oh, I'm ha having him in there early and then having a real good look at him to, s to see whether he's effective or he isn't. So uh, that, that would mean I would have had him in very early because he's running hot and I, I think... Uh, he, they can be a, a cavalier gamble. Boland's, Boland's success or failure early on to me will decide, I think, Nisha's fate. Because there's a bit of a theory, Jared, and I'm keen to bounce this off here, that when Basball gets unleashed in this series, these cavalier English stroke makers, if Boland's in there with that beautiful standardised line and length, He's the guy they'll have a good old-fashioned dip at. Yep. And, and, and they'll really come hard at him. They'll really try and smack him. Now, if he holds his line and length and it works, and he can do a little bit, he could just fill his creel or go completely the other way. <laughs> and they could have a, have a you know, they, they may really connect with him. So I, I'm watching Scott very closely. Um, uh, he, he, he's got such a solid foundation about him. He can just, he, you can put a blindfold on him. You can put a ball on a good length, but they'll come hard at that. They don't mind that in baseball. They know where the ball's landing. They'll go after it. So he, he, he's a player of significant interest and it's be fascinating to see. Even just talking about him, loving it. Oh, know? yeah. And so uh, the bowling side of things is the most interesting aspect. Six tests. It's a really jammed schedule. There are routine back-to-back -back test matches. So Australia's captain is Pat Cummins. Does he play all six? Um, Mitchell Stark won't. I think they're. I, I think they'd love him to play five. Whether that ends up being four, Hazelwood. No one quite knows. Is what sort of shape is he in? And in his own mind, given that this is 
This is two years of Red Bull cricket, which has been substantially interrupted. I can definitely see a scenario where Nisa plays the first test alongside Stark and Cummins. And then, yep. so it, it is the last time they called it the squad mentality. And remember, they did really weird stuff. As, um, was it Stark and Hazelwood weren't there at the start? And so they were they were creative and inventive. I think the, the schedule is going to make it essential to rotate bowlers. Boland seems better, uh, fresh to me. I, he's been ideally placed in the tests that he's played. Hazelwood, you couldn't have back up. Nisa, where do you insert him? How many does Stark get through, given there's enough body of work to say five feels like too many when he plays endlessly in those series? They'll want Cummins there for all of him. Can he be? So, uh, in there somewhere is, is such a critical equation. Yeah, it, it really is. And gosh, the world has changed, Jared. I went to a reunion on the weekend 30 years since we a, a group of five of us covered the 1993 Ashes Tour. And when we landed in England, it was six weeks before the first test. Yeah. Now, now the whole series is six weeks. Yeah. Like the tour went for four and a half months. Like it was incredible. We played 19 three-day games, played nearly every county. It was extraordinary. So you could take your foot off the pedal and look at playing the same attack. You know, they'd breast up between tests. But you're right. I think this series will be one in the selection room and it'll be one with the rotation of the bowlers. There's not a heck of a lot happening with us. Australia's batting order, there's not a heck of a lot they can do. Sure, the openers are under serious question marks, but if you said the two biggest things that Australia has to solve in this series, it's simply this. They've got to work out where Hazelwood fits in, if at all, and they've got to work out where what they do with David Warner. You know, what what's a pass mark, you know, and it'll be you know, they're, they're major calls, aren't they? They really are. So, but there will be shuffling of the fast bowlers. There simply has to be. And uh, you're playing six tests in eight weeks. You, you can't get through it all. Your question's a good one about Pat Cummins because I I don't think plan A is to rest him. No. I, I really don't. They'll try and get through. But I don't think they will shy away from plan B if he has anything wrong with him. Like, if he needs a break, Smith will step up as captain and um, and then 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 Nisa does go in again, doesn't he? Yeah. But uh, they won't shy away from it. They're not going to burn Pat Cummins out for the sake of one test. But but this is the price you pay. You know, with a, with a bowler test captain, there's just always the chance he's, he's going to be rested. The parry and thrust has been terrific, which we're thoroughly enjoying. So Stuart Broads, those ashes were void. Mitch Starks, it didn't look terribly void to me. And now Stuart Broads come back. He has. And <laughs> he's such a lively character, isn't he, Stuart Broad? And, and, and he actually, there's two types of sportsmen, those that hate creating an issue and those that quietly enjoy it. He just reminds me so much of England's version of David Hooks, the former Australian batsman, who he, who would have been a sensation, Hooks, he unfortunately uh, was killed at the turn of the century, would have been a sensation on social media. He would have <laughs> loved getting it out there. And, and uh, you know, I can remember, um, you know, when he, he, he'd love stirring the pot hooksy and saying provocative things. He used to call one of our umpires up here, Mel Johnson, fingerless Mel, because uh, he wouldn't uh, give anyone out. And uh, <laughs> when I said it's great, oh, I said, there's been huge reaction up here, hooksy. Oh, it's been b bitter. He goes, that's terrific. You know, <laughs> and Broad reminds me of the same. Stuart Broad so sat back and said of uh, Mitchell Stark, who said of the English that you're whinging about being in quarantine when you're in Australia, but it was a very easy quarantine. You could you know, get out and enjoy yourself still. It was coming to the end of COVID. For God's sake, stop whinging. And Stuart Broad's come back, well, well you guys never played a test, did you, during COVID overseas? And he's right. Australia did go a two-year period during COVID without playing overseas. And the, uh, England, to their credit, did tour and had a much busier schedule. That is a matter of fact. So they're both sort of right and they're both sort of wrong as they go back <laughs> and forward towards each other. But Broad's point is fair. Australia didn't went a couple of years without touring overseas. And I will say this, as much as uh, England were really poor on the last Ashes tour, they were cooked by COVID before they got here. They were absolutely mentally wrung out 
and ripe for the picking. That, by the way, doesn't excuse a lot of their previous tours here where they've been rubbish yep. as well. Yep. The women's ashes, Australia dealt a, a huge blow with news on the weekend that Captain Meg Lanning is out on medical grounds, uh, something she needs to be close to home for, which was shrouded in mystery, but also uh, obviously there's an element of um, personal privacy in that, that. But there's no underestimating what that means for this team as they head off to defend the urn. Well, absolutely. Uh, Alyssa Healy stepping up as Captain Tully McGrath, vice-captain, and uh, they're becoming, they are very private now, uh, Cricket Australia, with injuries to the men's and women's team. Like we, we often find, I know Pete Lawler's always, you know, writing about this, that Australian men's injuries are always underplayed. Like Josh Hazelwood's got an Achilles tendon injury. Oh, but it's, it's, yeah, it's not, not, not too bad. And then suddenly disappears for a month or so. So, but no, our thoughts are with Meg. You know, she's... Uh, she had time out away from the game when she uh, last year wasn't even sure whether she would return. Um, and she needed that break after 10 years of the captaincy, got away from it, came back, batted well, and now she's gone again for a different reason, which is undisclosed. So, yeah, it will be interesting to see um, what her future is. You know, if she ha does she want to come back is it just a routine injury all will be revealed soon i believe okay well we'll, uh, we'll discuss it at that stage then wisdom and experience of robert craddock on a monday on a monday